Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Sea Harrier FRS-1, of which is a currently Tier 7 10.7BR Squadron Strike aircraft for the British Air Tech Tree. That said, in this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about the Squadron Harrier variant, including its stats, how it plays. I'll go over its strengths and weaknesses, I'll give it some scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I feel if this vehicle is worth grinding for, purchasing or researching or well not that said if you like this kind of video if you like vertical takeoff and landing all aspect missiles or simply you just like some rudy tooty point and shooties then please consider subscribing to my channel but without further ado let's get into the video now to start i'll place its stat card here on the side of the screen important things to note are its subsonic speed poor turn time and of course aim 9l missiles now for how it plays if you've ever flown the harrier gr3 or to a lesser extent the harrier gr R1 or really any of the AV-8s for the American air tech tree, then you've basically already flown the Sea Harrier FRS-1, at least in relation to flight performance and characteristics. The big difference here is the inclusion of AIM-9Ls on the FRS-1. With that said, the Sea Harrier is a subsonic plane that accelerates quickly to around 900 km per hour, then greatly loses acceleration thereafter. It also has largely poor maneuverability, though this is offset in part by using partial thrust vectoring and flaps while turning. Because of these negative performance traits, along with this plane of course being subsonic, it is going to be among the worst performers in each match that you play, barring a complete down tier. Now this doesn't make it bad however, as its magic ticket to kills will almost always be the AIM-9L missiles, which are all aspect and can sustain a high G turn, making them into one of the deadliest close range missile options in War Thunder. Along with this are decent, though not great, 30mm Aiden cannons that can knock out most planes out of the sky with ease, should you hit them with an HE shell. With all this taken into consideration, one can try to boom and zoom with the FRS-1, though you won't get to as high of an altitude as many other planes in the same amount of time, so it's a somewhat risky strategy. Alternatively, one could simply stay somewhat low, enter the battle from the side, and kill enemies as you see them, which is typically what's going to happen. On top of this, you can also include up to 5 1,000 pound bombs in your payload without sacrificing any AIM-9 L's, which gives the FRS-1 the ability to destroy a single base in Air RB while also going after enemy players. Now for close air support, this plane is extremely basic. While it has some nice things like Bliss's computers for both bombs and rockets, the FRS-1 only has unguided ordnance, with a max bomb load of the aforementioned 5 1,000 pound bombs or up to 72 RP rockets. These rockets are among the worst that you can have at this BR, as they have an average amount of explosive filler and they're only HE, meaning that they only have 10 millimeters of armor pen. With the exception of unarmored vehicles, RP rockets can likely not destroy anything in War Thunder. Regardless, you'll probably just want to take five bombs to battle, along with of course your four AIM-9Ls, so that you can provide air cover after going after ground targets. In all, this plane has little to write home about in terms of CAS. It is defined by being average, which is neither good nor is it bad. Now with all that said, let's get into its strengths and weaknesses, and for its strengths, the FRS-1 has incredible acceleration, though it becomes less impressive as you gain speed, as it will with pretty much every other Harrier. Second, it has four of the excellent all-aspect AIM-9L missiles, though these are more easily flared away than some people might want to believe. For its third strength, it can vector thrust, which improves maneuverability by a small amount, and also allows, of course, for vertical takeoff and landing. For its fourth strength, it has ballistic computers for both bombs and rockets. Beyond this, it has, at least currently, a favorable BR, which makes matchmaking against similar and lower BR enemies a common occurrence. And finally, it has fairly decent 30mm Aiden cannons. Now for its weaknesses, it has awful turning capability, only slightly better than the F-104 in most instances. For its second weakness, it is subsonic, which puts you in the lower echelon of performance around this BR. For its third weakness, its engine overheats very quickly when at or near 100% throttle, meaning that you can only use around 92% percent throttle at most for any sustained period of time. Fourth, it lacks any mid-range missile options. Speaking of, it does have a radar, although it is fairly basic, only with a 30 kilometer range. Sixth, while it isn't necessarily a strength or a weakness, the FRS-1 has 
has a total of 60 countermeasures, which could easily be underwhelming for some, especially at this BR. And finally, speaking to the first strength that I listed, the acceleration of this aircraft is incredible only at lower speeds, and drops off substantially the closer that you get to and beyond 1,000 kilometers per hour. Now with all that said, let's get into how I score this airplane. For air RB and dogfighting, I give it a 7.25 out of 10. At its current BR, the plane itself isn't really all that good. It has essentially the same performance and flight characteristics of the Harrier GR3, which is a 9.7 BR brick that turns like a mega yacht and is also subsonic like most mega yachts. Where the Sea Harrier FRS-1 shines is simply in the fact that it has the excellent AIM-9L all-aspect missiles, of which are the sole reason why it sits in the BR in which it sits. Because it has four AIM-9Ls, as well as a decent standard cannon setup and good acceleration from low speeds, the FRS-1 is quite potent at this BR, and almost entirely relies on its missiles. Without those, this plane would be awful at 10.7 BR. It would essentially be a Harrier GR-3 clone. Now for close air support, I give it a 5 out of 10. It's not good, nor is it bad. At this BR, ballistic computers are essentially expected, and thankfully the FRS-1 has them for both bombs and rockets. It has a fairly good bomb load of up to 5,000 pounds, which is average or maybe even slightly above average. Where it really falls off is with its rockets, which are the terrible RP rockets that have awful armor pen and not much explosive filler to make up for it, essentially making them usable only against unarmored vehicles. Part of me wants to give this vehicle a slightly higher CAS score, but the terrible RP rockets of the FRS-1 essentially count, to me at least, as having no rockets, which is a huge negative for close air support. Almost every other nation has better rockets than this. But again, at least they can destroy some SPAA, so they are not entirely unusable. Plus, of course, the FRS-1 does not benefit from having any sort of guided weapons. Because of everything considered here, I would say the FRS-1 is merely average as a close air support plane. Now with all that said, overall, I give it a 6.5 out of 10, with of course air RB and dogfighting being more heavily weighted than close air support. If just looking from a purely performance-based point of view, the Sea Harrier FRS-1 would be a 3 out of 10 in this category, but like with many other planes, it is immensely boosted by its ordnance. While the plane itself is mediocre at this BR, doubly so when in an up tier, the AIM-9Ls help not only to even the playing field, but do tilt it in your favor. They take this plane from being bad to being good, in a way similar to what we see with the A6E Tram. In terms of CAS, as stated before, the FRS-1 is perfectly average. It'll get the job done with no frills, so don't expect any crazy kill shots or many kills in a single round of close air support. Thankfully, the AIM-9Ls can also be used to great effect in an air cover role, so these do help in that regard. Otherwise, put succinctly, this is a mediocre plane with excellent air-to-air -air weapons and average anti-ground weapons. Weapons. Now with all that said, do I recommend this plane for research or purchasing? Well, I do, but not wholeheartedly. Personally, I place a great deal of value on plane's performance, which makes my reception to this plane a bit lukewarm. It does have excellent missiles and decent close air support capability, which is what most people will probably like and be happy with, but I just see the FRS-1 as a poor plane with shiny toys that can shoot down faster and better planes. Unlike the A-10, A-6E, and Su-25K, each of which have have all aspect missiles, the FRS-1 has to almost exclusively face high performance aircraft, which puts it at a less of a comparative advantage when considering those planes. Regardless, if you want something to sling all aspect missiles at a somewhat reasonable BR, this plane is a good choice for that, and can double as a basic CAS plane. Otherwise, if you're looking for performance, you will not find it in the FRS-1, and should consider researching, perhaps if you like ground, the T-80UK or the M1A1 AIM. Though if nothing else, this Sea Harrier FRS-1 does compare favorably when considering the other high BR squadron jet in the Su-22 UM-3, so you should likely prioritize the Harrier over the Su-22. Now with that said, thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought of this video and aircraft in the comments below, and also please consider subscribing if you like this sort of content. Either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.